Today's video lecture is going to be about the binary number system. Now, in the Intel microprocessor lessons that you've been going through on the computer, you've learned a lot about how the computer works. You know that the computer works with just electricity and it has circuits and switches. And the circuits are either going to be on or off and that's controlled by the switches. So really the computer only has two states, on or off. And that's how we're going to use binary. But let's just back up for a second. Let's talk about decimal. This is the number system that we use every day in your math class. And DEC means 10. So the decimal number system, which, which is what we use, is base 10. That is called base 10 because it has 10 digits. The digits are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. What happens after you get to 9? You have to reuse the digits. So I use any combination of these to make any number higher than 9. Works great for us. Doesn't work great for the computer because it does not have 10 different states. It only has two states. And those states are 0 equals off and 1 equals on. So the computer has to represent everything it does, pictures, numbers, letters, sounds. Everything is represented with zeros and ones, on or off. So by means two. Binary is base two. It only has two digits. Guess what those are? You got it. Zero and one. So it represents every single letter, number, symbol, picture, color with just zeros and ones. Now, these are called digits, zero through nine. These are called digits, and in particular, they're binary digits. And computer scientists just shorten this. It takes the B from binary and the it from digit, and a zero and a one is called a bit. It's the smallest piece of data that a computer can comprehend, a bit. And we group them together in groups of eight. So here's a section, there's eight bits here put together in, in computer science terms. This is called a byte, spelled with a Y. So you talk about kilobytes, gigabytes, terabytes. They're talking about units of information and we usually put eight of them together to talk about one letter, one character, one color. Now this is kind of an olden times. Nowadays we, you hear about 16 bit and even 64 bit. So that would be 16 zeros and ones or 64 zeros and ones. Now I'm gonna have you watch another video lecture that was done by somebody else and it's gonna to explain to you more about decimal and binary. And you're gonna take a couple of notes on this and then you're gonna get some practice. Hello and welcome to Binary 101. The purpose of this video is to serve the viewer, yourself, a lesson in binary and how to convert a string of ones and zeros into a recognizable number in the decimal counting system. Hopefully by the end of this video I can take your mind away from the common thought that 101 has to equal 101, but it could also represent 5 which it does in the binary system. Before jumping into the binary system, let's look at the decimal numbering system to get a better understanding of it. Decimal gets its name from its root word dec, dec meaning 10. It gets 10 because it's a base 10 numbering system, which is evident down here. Base is 10 to the 0 gives us 1. Base 10 to the 1 gives us 10. 10 to the 2 is 100. 10 to the 3 is 1,000. 10 to the 4 is 10,000. All the numbers in which you want to count in the base 10 or decimal numbering system are represented with the numbers 0 through 9. There's 10 numbers in, all, in total. And how that works in a weighted table, which is where the uh, 10 to the 0, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, comes from, is 10 to the 0 gives you your 1's position, 10 to the 1 gives you your 10's, and 100's, 1,000's, and 10,000's. So if we were to put a 1 in the 1's position, we have 1, 1. If we have a 5 in the 1's position, we have 5, 1's. So you have 5. A 1 in the tens position gives you 10. And a 5 in the tens position gives you 5 tens, or 50. In the hundreds position, if you have 1, you have 100. 
whereas a 5 in the hundreds position is 5 hundreds, or 500. And that's the premise and how the decimal numbering system is operated. Now we'll dive into the same sort of structure in the binary system, but the numbers are going to be changed ever so slightly. And here we start to look at the operations for binary. Binary gets its name from its root word by, by meaning two. Binary is a base two numbering system. Down here on the far left corner, far bottom left corner, you have two to the zero is one, two to the one is two, two to the two is four, two to the three is eight, two to the four is sixteen. These twos represent the base, and the one, zero through four right here, which it goes up to as high as you want it to go, represents the uh, operation in which it's raised to which power. Um, if you wanted to find out what 2 to the 90th power was, you just multiply that out and you'll find out what it is. Binary uses two numbers, zeros and ones. Over on our weighted table, we have it drawn out. Instead of having a ones place in the tens and hundreds and the thousands, you have a one, a two, a four, and an eight. Now unlike the, the decimal counting system where you can have one one or you can have five ones, Binary is what was taught to me is a all or none counting system, meaning that one represents all, zero represents none. So if you have a one in the ones position, you have one one. If you have a zero in the ones position, you have none. If you have a one in the two position, you have all the twos. So you have one two. You have two total, and you have zero ones. Again, if you put a 1 in the 8 position, you have all of this 8, 1, 8, so you have 8, and you fill in the rest with zeros because you have none of the other numbers. 1, 0, 0, 0 is the binary number for 8. Let's do a couple of uh, examples to kind of show you what I'm talking about on this. Here we have a small weighted table with our 1, our 2, our 4, and our 8, and I got a couple of example problems over here on the left hand side, a 5, a 9, and a 14. What the goal is, is to convert the 5 into binary, a 9, and the 14. To do this, you simply look at the binary weighted table. 8 and 5. Well, in the last segment I said that binary is kind of an all or none counting system. And the reason why I said that was, if you cannot use all of a particular number, you cannot use any of that particular number. All being a 1, and none being a 0, so 5. 5 does go into 8, but you cannot use all of it, so it's not even needed. However, 5 does use all of the 4, so it's held by this position of 1 underneath the 4. Well, if we're using all of this 4, we have our original number of 5, and we subtract that 4 we just used, and we end up with 1. Well, if we have 1 remaining, we come down to the 2. Well, we can use some of the 2, but we cannot use all of it. Since we can't use all of it, we use none of it. And then we come back over here to our 1 and look at the 1 over here. We can use all of it, and we do. So we end up with 101. Now, how do we know that 101 is equal to 5? Well, let's find out. If we use 1, 4, and 1, 1, and no 2s, we use 4 plus 1 is 5. Let's look at the number 9. 9 and 8. We can use all of that 8, so we do, represented by this 1. Well, if we use all of that 8, you take your original number of 9, and you subtract the 8 we just used, and you have one remainder. Well, we cannot use all of the 4, so we use none of it. We cannot use all of the 2, again, so we use none of it. We have a 1, here's a 1, so we'll hold that position with this 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0, and we have no remainder and no more numbers to use, so we end up with 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, how do we know that that's 9? Well, if we used 1, 8 and 1, 1, 8 plus 1 is 9. Let's look at a little bit bigger of a number, 14. We can use all of that 8 with the 14, so we use it with the 1. We take our original number 14 and we subtract the 8 we just used, which gives us 6, 6 remaining. Then we look back over here. Well, 6 does use all of the 4, so we use it, we hold it with the 1. On the left-hand side, we subtract 4 from 6, giving us 2. And then we look back, we have a 2, we have a 2 remaining, so we'll use this 2 as well. 
So on the left hand side again, we subtract the two we just used and we have zero left over. Well, there's only one number left and it's a one since we have nothing remaining, that's going to be a zero. So we end up with one, 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 zero. Now how do we know that this is 14? Same way we found out the other ones were. Eight plus four gives us 12 and 12 plus two gives us 14. For part B, you're going to put together a digital calculator. So you're going to get a paper like this, and we're going to actually use this to change from decimal to binary and binary to decimal. So this is how you make your calculator. First of all, fold your paper lengthwise like this. Get a good crease. Okay. Then you're going to open it up again, and you'll see where the ones are. There's some dotted lines. You're going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut on these dotted lines all the way up to the fold. So you can go a little past where the dotted lines are. Cut up to your fold. fingers. Now I'm going to fold it again. So I cover up everything. I'm going to take my marker and on the outside I'm just going to write zeros. You can use a pencil, a pen, a marker. You're going to write zero. So on one side you have zero, one side you have one. You're going to use this calculator to do the next section. So go ahead and pause this video and make your calculator. Now you're going to use your paper calculator to help you convert decimal numbers to binary. And with this calculator, you can do it very easily. We're just going to match up. Here is one byte. It's got eight digits, eight bits. And your calculator it has a section for eight bits. So you're simply going to make it match. If there's a zero, you leave the flap down. If there's a one, you put the flap up. So I'm going to put the flap up right here, then two more zeros, and then up. So you see how this matches? Zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero. I just make my calculator match the example. Now, wherever there's a one, like the video said, that means all. So I have 64 plus eight plus four. Let's add that up. Okay, we've got 16 right here, 7, so this number, 01001100, equals 76. Let's try the next example. I'm going to put all my flaps down. I'm just going to put a 1 up here, and a 1 right here, and a 1 right here. So I just make my calculator match the example, and if the 1 is up, I'm going to add it. So I've got a 128, and a 4, and a 1. Add them up. I've got 13 and 1, so I get 133. So this number is 76 binary decimal. This number is 133 binary decimal. Now you've got a few more to do on your own or do with a partner. Use your calculator, just flip the flaps up, add up the numbers that show, and you've been able to convert from decimal, from binary to decimal. Now we're going to use your paper calculator to go the reverse. We're going to take a decimal number and we're going to convert it to ones and zeros, binary. Now this is pretty much the same process, just have to do a little bit of math in your head. The first one's not too hard because we know one of these numbers right here is four. I'm just going to flip up the flap. So I just have the four showing and then I'm just going to copy down these. So I've got all these zeros, one, two, three, four, five. I've got five zeros. Then I've got a one and a zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then a one, zero, zero. So I've got a bit, a byte. I always want to have eight digits here. My answers are going to be bytes. And this is four in binary, four in decimal. Now let's do 17. I'm going to flip, flip up the first number that's just, that is less than 
17. So I can't flip up 32, 32 is more. I'm gonna flip up 16. This is the first one that's less than 17. Now if I subtract, that's what they did in the video. If I subtract 16, I have one left over. Well, I know I've got a one over here, so I'm gonna to have to, I would flip up the flaps just like this. 16 and one gives me 17. So I'm gonna copy down, I've got three zeros. And I've got a one. And then I've got three more zeros. And I've got a one. So I've got the number in decimal and in binary. Let's try 50. Now the first nut I can flip up, 64 is too big. So I'm gonna start with 32. So now I'm gonna have 32. Whoa, what's left over? Well, let's subtract. So 50 minus 32. Okay, so I'm gonna have 18. Okay, well, I know that 16 is here. I'm gonna subtract 16 and then I've got two. Okay, so I should have 32 plus 16 plus two and that's gonna give me 50. So here I have my ones and zeros. So zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. So I have decimal and binary. So you just whatever numbers are showing, those should add up to the decimal number that I want. Now you have a few more to try on your own or with a partner. Use your calculator, lift those flaps, you're gonna get your answers.